This is Robert Fletcher's paper mill, located in Greenfield, England. In this video, I am going to show you how this huge mill turned raw material into high quality cigarette paper. The 500 acre estate contained a date stone revealing that there has been a mill on this site for over 200 years. During the First World War, the mill produced bleached cotton for materials used for the production of explosives. Robert Fletcher's commenced the manufacture of cigarette paper here in 1921. This is a process that requires a huge amount of clean and pure water. Originally, a stream giving the motive force for the mill's water wheel was converted and built into this huge reservoir that was constructed between 1958 and 1965. This supplied up to 20,000 cubic metres of water each day, which was free from dissolved salts and colour. This is a requirement for paper. All water used by the mill was chemically treated here in these large tanks to remove the last traces of colour. It was then filtered and stored in the original mill pool, the outlet from the now defunct water wheel. With the invention of the national grid, electricity became the motive force for the mill and the water wheel was decommissioned in the 1950s before the construction of the reservoir. In 1975, a large new paper machine was installed here at Greenfield. Much reconstruction of the mill took place. Output was effectively doubled by this installation. In this drone footage we can see the 1975 construction machine house which was built in place of the old water wheel powered mill buildings. Cigarette paper is made from hemp and flax fibres which was imported from Europe and the Far East. All raw material was inspected before processing after weighing the raw material, it was reduced in length by passing it through a rotary chopper and it was then blown through the ducting into a digester. When the digester had received its weight charge of fibre, a metered amount of alkali was added. Each digester holds four tonnes of chopped fibrous raw material. These pivotal pressure vessels, each having a capacity of 20 cubic metres. There were seven digesters along this row. In the digesters, steam was injected through the trunnions until a pressure of 450 kilo pascals was reached. The digester then rotated slowly to ensure a uniform treatment of the material. This cycle took 12 hours where the time and pressure were carefully monitored and controlled during the digestion process. A 50% reduction of mass took place here in the digestion process. Spent digester product was expelled this was collected and metered into the site waterworks shown here in this drone footage. The digested fibre product was then conveyed into this machine where excess residual liquid was removed prior to washing. This piece of equipment is called a pot chair. Here the fibre was washed free of digesting liquid. The main job of the potcher was really to wash the fibre 
whilst doing some cutting to reduce the fibre length. Later, in the process, the beaters were used to fibrillate the fibres. Inevitably, some cutting goes on at this stage too. A 10 tonne rotating barred roll working against a serrated stationary backplate. The wash material from the potcher is then treated with a saturated solution of chlorine. The digested and barred rolled material is then treated with a little hypochlorite, resulting in a fully bleached pulp material. This process creates a bleach pulp being washed on a rotary vacuum filter. The product is beaten followed by refining. Both these processes expose new surfaces within the fibres. After dilution, the bleached product is spun tangently, which removes imperfections. This paper machinery was installed in 1975. Starting with a wet end consisting of the wire of extremely fine mesh supported by foils to assist drainage, and a large water making roll or dandy, this machine is computer controlled and paper pulp is scanned continuously. The detector head measures substance by beta rays, moisture by infrared and chalk filler by x-rays. Corrections are automatically made via a feedback loop. This machinery is also equipped with a fault detector and continuous product measurement. The information from the scanner is displayed on a colour video screen from which data printouts could be obtained on demand. Paper sheet left the machine assisted by a vacuum roll called a couch. The web of paper was then pressed and dried, being held against hot rotating cylinders. Along the production line, the cylinders gradually increased in temperature and the paper was progressively dried. The paper is reeled up, producing a jumbled roll. The jumbled roll was then slit in two coils. This sequence produced coils wound in the same direction on a single shaft at a speed of a thousand meters per minute. The slit coils were automatically offloaded from the machine onto a splitting table for separation. This type of splitter produces coils wound onto shafts. All the coils produced were physically inspected for faults here in this warehouse area. After inspection, the coils were packed into cartons or cases of various types. In this laboratory, the finished product was meticulously examined for its physical and chemical properties. The level of chemical additive which controls the rate of burn of the cigarette paper was measured in this lab room. Thank you for watching this ALW exploration video. Please subscribe and share. Also, check out my other videos on ALW Exploration's homepage and playlists. Looking over my shoulder, looking back at your door, in my head it goes over and over, should I leave or want it more? Look